like we discussed about the history of this particular uh, incident uh, now history is something very much important that we have to pay our attention so uh, we discussed about what actually happened uh, in sri lanka related to this incident i told you uh, it is important to know about the history of this particular incident as well now when we discuss about the history the entire incident or else the big match the big match refers to 1983 communal clash right which occurred in 1983 between a uh, single majority and tamil minority now when we take this incident as an incident you have to understand that the entire incident actually uh, occurred because of the irrational behavior of Singular majority. At the same time, all these opportunistic politicians always wanted to create some kind of segregation between Singhala community and Tamil community. Now, this is what actually the poet is criticized. I told you what actually happened, but what actually uh, resulted uh, from this particular incident. Even today, we can see the repercussions of this particular incident. So. Without having a proper understanding about this political situation, you will not be able to understand this poem. Even though you try hard to understand this particular poem, you will never be able to understand this poem if you do not have that political history. So even inside the poem also, we can find a political history where there are a number of political years, significant political years that we have to pay our attention. Then only we can realize the poem. So however, uh, in this particular poem, we discuss about uh, the communal clash actually occurred in Sri Lanka because of the irrational behavior of Singhala majority. At the same time, the poetess pays attention towards the opportunistic politicians. That is something very much important. Opportunistic politicians who took the maximum advantage from this particular incident. Now, throughout the poem, what you have to understand, my dear students, now these politicians who live in Sri Lanka, this is a political poem. Now, we cannot actually escape without explaining this particular incident. This is a political poem. You have to understand that. The entire poem is very much political, right? This is Sri Lankan literature and the poetess is discussing about politics. Now, most of the politicians in Sri Lanka, they like our people, our citizens to be segregated, separated. The separation must occur according to the culture, according to the religion, according to the language, or according to the race. Now, as an example, if you take the political groups of Sri Lanka, uh, different types of political parties in Sri Lanka. Now, if you take Ilangay Tamil Arasukachi, right, Tamil, based on Tamil, so Ilangay Tamil Arasukachi, Tamil, right? Then if you take... Uh, Another political party that we have in Sri Lanka, very popular political party, Sri Lanka Muslim Congress. So Muslim. Now you can see the race and the community. Then if you take Bodhu Balasena, Bodhu, Bodhu means religion. So most of the political parties, right, in Sri Lanka, they always target towards this religion and language. So this is the maximum advantage actually taken by most of the politicians who lived in Sri Lanka. Right. So even in this situation also, when this communal clash occurred, what actually happened? Politicians wanted to actually boost this particular incident. That is why they paid money to certain set of uh, mobs, to certain set of thugs, in order to continue this particular uh, communal clash for a longer time period, for more than two to three days. Can you understand? It is true that uh, Sri Lankan majority actually started this particular communal clash, but they never wanted to grow this particular incident up to that level. Now, these mobs, these thugs who were actually supported by these uh, politicians, they are the ones who actually continued the incident to the next level. Now, Sri Lankan majority of Sinhalese, they never thought that this will be ended up like this. This situation will be ended up like this. They never thought like that. They never thought that the incident will be uh, a huge clash where a lot of uh, Tamil people and Sinhala people will be killed and the property will be destroyed. They never expected that, right? They never ever expected that. But this is what actually happened. This is not something that they have actually expected, but unfortunately, this is what happened, right? Okay. So we discussed about the first stanza. If you can remember, uh, we discussed about the behavior of... Uh, now here, my dear students, I am going to tell you again 
basically in this poem we have seven stanzas and these uh, seven stanzas are actually uh, highlighted seven different situations seven different scenarios related to this particular poem don't think that they are interconnected right they are not interconnected actually so the poetess tries to explain about the incident in several ways in several perspectives can you understand so she pays her attention to the uh, political situation social situation cultural situation so likewise she is dividing that into several sections now in the first stanza we discussed about how media reacted to this particular situation instead of providing a solution to the problem using different types of uh, eye catching headlines they wanted to sell their newspapers they never bothered about people they never bothered about people they wanted to sell more and more newspapers to improve their profit margin they did not bother about their uh, bother about the country this is the reality and what about what about the tourist the tourism industry the poet has discusses about the tourism industry right so almost all the tourists they decided that okay it is better to go to another country rather than staying in sri lanka so they cancel their trips they did not want to go to the uh, temple and the holy mountain what is the temple and the holy mountain anyone can you remember last week speak sorry sorry what is that temple and the holy mountain holy adam mountain speak. adam speak ah adam speak can the dalada maliga the temple of two right remember ah huh? they are known to be the most popular tourist destinations in sri lanka right almost all the tourists uh, who come to sri lanka they don't forget to visit these particular places right so now they want to cancel their trips and they are moving to other countries and some people think that okay canada is much more better than sri lanka so they are cancelling their trips so due to this particular problem this is known to be black july now black rivers to this communal clash actually brought a black mark to our country internationally sri lanka was actually recognized as a country uh, that you should not visit even the uh, during the saharans attack actually same thing happened right so sri lanka was blacklisted right lot of uh, tourists they did not want to come to sri lanka because they identified the communal clash is actually uh, resulted in some kind of insecurity when it comes to their life so this is what actually happened so this is what actually we discussed last week did we write about this part last week please pass me a message yes sir right very good so we will move on from there i hope that you guys have completed now we are going to uh, line number 5 6 7 8 9 i have named them because then it is very easy for you to understand uh, then you can clearly refer to the light so in your textbook they have not actually uh, referred like that but i have uh, named them so then the student can very easily refer to which line that i am referring to so we will move on from there right so still we are referring to the first stanza actually and even the gone away boy who had hoped to find lost roots lost flowers lost talent even now among the palms makes timely return giving thanks that torento is quite romantic enough for his purposes now here the poetess is mentioning about a boy he is a tourist so he came to sri lanka in order to visit these beautiful places this particular boy he came to sri lanka in order to see these particular beautiful places of the country he wanted to see the beauty of the country at the same time he wanted to find out the uh, different types of abilities and talents that our ancestors had when it comes to these civilizations and technologies he came to sri lanka to see the beauty of our country and the romance related to that so that is what the poet says highlighted here the gone away boy means that particular tourist who came to sri lanka lost roots lost root means our history the history right these tourists are very much enthusiastic to find out the history of sri lanka because we have a written history of 2500 years most of the developed countries like america australia they don't have like any written history right they don't have a written history but as sri lankans we have a written history of 2500 years so we should be very proud about that right we should be very proud about that we have a written history 2500 years so a lot of tourists they came to sri lanka and they wanted to find about these civilizations and the history and lost lovers the romance right about the kings and queens right the connections the relationships right so that is why these tourists actually come to sri lanka in order to find out these miracles that is why they visit sigiriya that is why they visit uh, temple of the two thorels the adam speak to find out these miracles right so see see these miracles right so that is why they come to sri lanka that is how we build up our 
um, what do you call industry, right? Or else we call that uh, tourism, right? But unfortunately, now what has happened? Now the boy is very much happy. Lost talent means our ability, our the ability of our ancestors to build up uh, those uh, tanks, right? Reservoirs, right? So our talent, our capabilities, right? So tourists, they come to visit all these things. That is why they come to Sri Lanka, right? And among the palms makes timely return giving thanks. Now, actually they came to Sri Lanka in order to visit these beautiful places. Now they have decided uh, it is better to go to another country. Now, timely return. Now, this is the best time to return back because like uh, due to this communal clash, our life will be in danger. This is what they thought. Can you understand? This is what they thought. So most of the tourists, they thought that our life will be in danger. So we have to uh, we have to go back from this country as soon as possible, right? Makes timely return giving thanks that Toronto is quite romantic enough for his purposes. Now, he has decided that it is better to go to Toronto. Toronto is another city which is situated in Canada, right? Another very popular tourist destination. So this particular boy thinks that it is better to go to Toronto in Canada rather than visiting the beauty of Sri Lanka. So now you can understand the reaction of tourists. So this entire first stanza, if you pay your attention very carefully, my dear students, you will realize that the poetess is actually highlighting two important things. Number one, the poetess is trying to highlight what kind of illogical, irrational behavior can be depicted from uh, when it comes to the media, print media especially, right? Those days we did not have like uh, social media, print media, right? Newspapers. So instead of providing some kind of solace, instead of providing some kind of answer for these questions, for their problems, media reacted in a very much subtle manner where they did not bother about the deaths and the violence and everything they wanted to report. Even today, same thing is done by Derana, Hiru TV, ITN and everything, right? They make small business. Facebook videos and they actually upload them into Facebook, right? Most of them are actually about uh, different types of sexual harassments or else about cricketers or else about uh, suicides. That is what they normally do, right? That is what we call media propaganda. That is what they do, right? In order to get the attraction of the audience, that is what they do. Even today, they do the same thing, right? The time period may be different, but the history repeats, right? The same thing happens. Right? This is what we have to understand as literature students. So those days also, this is what they did. Right, This is what they did. So that is what they wanted to do actually. Right, They wanted to highlight this situation and they want to get the maximum advantage when it comes to the profits. On the other hand, uh, we have to pay our attention towards the behavior of these tourists as well. They did not want to select Sri Lanka as one of their tourist destinations, most of them actually canceled their trips and they went back to their countries. And some of them, they have selected Sri Lanka as a very popular tourist destination in order to find out the beauty of Sri Lanka, about the kings and queens, our civilization, our ancient traditions and culture. Now they think that certain countries like Canada, certain cities like Toronto are much more uh, better than uh, Sri Lanka rather than visiting Sri Lanka due to this particular communal clash. Now, in the first stanza, this is what you have to understand, right? Very simple. Anybody can understand. I have explained everything. Lost roots, lost flowers, lost talent, even out among the palms. Lost civilization, abilities, and technology of ancestors. Romance remained in history. So as you can see here, this particular picture, you can clearly understand what kind of talent, what kind of capability was actually depicted by our ancestors. Now, we are actually... Uh, requesting financial support from most of the countries. But don't forget that this kind of talent was actually vested upon Sri Lankan. So we should be really happy about our ancestors, right? Those so-called British people, they didn't have any idea whatsoever. What do you mean by a statue? Look at these weapons. Look at these statues. Look at the carvings, right? So you can understand our talent, our lost talent, right? That is why this particular boy came to Sri Lanka, right? In order to find out that lost talent, this is what you have to highlight, my dear students. Lost civilization, abilities, technology, our ancestors, and the romance remained in history, right? Different types of relationships related to the history between kings and queens, prince and princesses. It can be the Hindu Tugamunu, Ao, anyone. 
So these are the enjoyable stories that uh, tourists actually enjoy when it comes to their uh, when it comes to their visits, right? So this is what the poetess has actually highlighted. So I hope you guys can understand. So here, lost roots, lost lovers, lost talent are actually depicted to the lost civilization, abilities, and technology of our ancestors. This is why these tourists actually came to Sri Lanka in order to enjoy this beauty. But due to this communal clash, what has happened, they have canceled their trips and they are moving back to their countries. This is what actually happened. I hope you guys can understand. I hope you guys have completed. So we will move on to the next part. Right. So, uh, Onaksha, can you read, Puta? Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, right. Shall we read this? Okay, sir. A boy who came to Sri Lanka in search of ancient civilization, cultural roots, and legacy of our motherland had made a timely decision to return. He thinks Toronto City in Canada is more ideal and romantic for his purposes than visiting Sri Lanka. He thinks like this due to the communal clash. There was no security for tourists. This again suggests to us the view of the tourists and the dilapidation of the tourist industry due to the communal clash which occurred in the country. The first nine lines of the poem suggest to us how this incident created a black mark in our country, especially among the tourists. The irresponsible behavior of the media is also ratified here where they try to gain more profits by sensationalizing the news rather than providing a solace to people. Right, very good. I don't, I, I don't want to explain here because I think that Puta, this is simple English. This is simple English, Puta. Anybody can understand. I will read this, then you guys can write down. I will give you enough time to write, so start writing. You guys can write down. Right, so I will start reading. Uh, right. So this is what we have explained. A boy who came to Sri Lanka in search of ancient civilization. So most probably this boy may be a tourist, right? We come to a conclusion like that, right? Yeah, divide and rule con concept is quite correct. Ronaksha, thank you for reminding me. We will discuss about that as well. We have to discuss about that. A boy who came to Sri Lanka in search of ancient civilization, cultural roots and legacy of our motherland had made the time decision to return. Now this boy came to see the beauty of our country. Right? This is what you can understand. He came to see the beauty of this country. But now what has happened actually? Now, he has decided that no, 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 no. I'm go not going to visit this particular place. I'm not going to visit this particular place. I'm going back. Why this particular boy has decided like that? He thinks to Toronto City in Canada. Now, they are selecting Buddha different countries, other places due to this communal clash. They don't like to visit Sri Lanka, right? These people actually came to Sri Lanka in order to spend their dollars and they want to enjoy uh, uh, happiness and everything, right? A boy who came to Sri Lanka in search of ancient civilization, uh, cultural roots and legacy of our motherland had made a time decision to return. He thinks Toronto city in Canada is more ideal and romantic for his purposes than visiting Sri Lanka. He thinks like this due to the communal clash, right? He thinks like that due to the communal clash, right? Otherwise, he will not think like that. Now, he has decided like that because of the communal clash. He decided that, okay, it is better to uh, go to Toronto rather than staying in Sri Lanka. This again suggests, uh, suggests to us the view of the tourist and the dilapidation of the tourist industry. Right? Tourism industry, actually. There is a typo. The tourism industry. Due to the communal clash which occurred in the country. The dilapidation, right? This is what happens. Right? This is what we call the dilapidation. Dilapidation means the suffocative situation, dilapidation, right? Um, the first nine lines of the poem suggest to us how this incident created a black mark in our country. This particular incident actually created a black mark, right? This actually created a black mark in our country, especially among the tourists. The black mark, black mark was actually created especially among the tourists. So that is why this particular incident is known to be what? Known to be Black July. Can you understand? Right, so that is why this particular incident is known to be Black July. Otherwise, they can call this as White July or Purple July or something like that. They have called this as Black July because this is what actually happened. Nobody expected this, and at the end of the day, this is what actually happened. Right, I hope that you guys have completed. Please pass me a message after completing. I have explained everything. 
with simple terms right simple terms anybody can understand simple terms very simple english right so very difficult poem make sure to study it carefully one of the most difficult poems Right, if you have finished, please pass me a message. The previous slide, actually, you can refer to the recording. You have to write down. Hurry up and write. Please pass me a message. Writing is important. I have told you several times. Refer to the recording if you miss the note. Because we can't scroll. We have given enough time to write down. So please make sure to complete your notes. If you have missed, refer to the recording. Hurry up and write down. I need five students to complete. So please pass me a message if you have finished. Right, did you finish? Shall we move on? Right, shall we move on to the next part? Right, is there anyone who is still writing? Please pass me a message. I told you several times, writing plays an important role. Please make sure to complete your writing now. That is important. Please pass me a message if you have finished. Hurry up. Right, do you need more time? Do you need more time?
Right. So we will move on to the next part. I hope you guys have completed. So I have given you the basic understanding of the first stanza. Right. This is the basic idea of the first stanza. Very difficult poem. We have seven stanzas. Huh? In the first stanza, the poet discusses about the dilapidation of the tourism industry. And the poetess is very much, uh, the poetess is actually criticizing about the behavior of, uh, especially about the behavior of media, how they behaved. Like, this is not the way that actually media should behave. According to the poetess, she said that rather than using these huge letters uh, as the uh, headlines, glimpsing headlines, they could have helped these innocent people in order to survive from their problems, right? Right. They should have taken kind of a different path, but unfortunately, they haven't done that. So the poet is, is very much criticizing. Uh, he's very much critical about, he's very much critical about that. Right, good. Now we are moving to the uh, second part, or else the second stanza, we are, we are moving to uh, uh, next parts, uh, 10, 11, 12, 30. Right, 10, 11, 12, 13. So these are the other lines that we are going to discuss now here. Uh, now the communal clash is actually, uh, after the communal clash, this particular lines can be taken as a flashback, right? Now the people who has engaged in this communal clash, especially the majority of Sinhalese, after completing this now, they have actually uh, destroyed all the property of these Tamil people because of the sudden anger because of their sudden emotions. They were uh, controlled by their emotions, not by their logical thoughts. Can you understand? That is why, because of the sudden uh, provocation, they behaved like this. But after that, actually, they are thinking. But after that, they are thinking about the particular situation. Okay, what actually happened? Now, what? why did we do this? Now, what is the real situation of these people? Now, this is what we are going to highlight. So now we have a different perspective. Now we don't discuss about tourism and media. Here we discuss about something else. Now let's pay your attention. Powerless this time to shelter or share. Now who are powerless? Who are powerless? People are powerless. Actually, this is very much ironical because when it comes to a country, people are the most powerful force. They are the ones who are actually putting their vote to these politicians and they are the ones who are selecting all these politicians to the parliament. That is the reality. So the real power is rested upon people. Can you understand? That is what we call the power of sovereignty. We are the ones who are actually uh, appointing Mahindra Rajapaksha, Gotabe Rajapaksha, Ranil Vikramasinghe. These people actually come to power due to our votes. So we have the voting power, right? This is what we call sovereignty. At the end of the day, we all have that power. We are the ones who are selecting them at the end of the day, right? So we are the ones who are responsible. Now, soon after they come to their positions, what will happen? People become powerless. They become powerful. Can you understand what I'm explaining here? So this is what the poet tries to explain. Now, all these people have become powerless. They don't have any power at all. They have become powerless. Can you understand, right? And they don't have any share. They don't have any shelter as well. They don't, they don't have any place to go. These innocent Tamil people, this is their motherland, whatever said and done. They may have come from India. But at the end of the day, we have to accept the fact that they are also citizens of this particular country. Can you understand, right? They don't have any alternative. They don't have any way to go, any, any country to go, right? So now they, have, now they don't have anyone to share. Now they don't have anyone to shelter them. So this is what the poetess tries to explain. The typical situation of the citizens who live in Sri Lanka. The typical situation. No one is going to pay attention to them. We strive. Now here we means. Especially the single majority. We means the single majority. They are the ones who, are, who were actually responsible for this. Whatever said and done. Whatever said and done, they are responsible, right? They were driven by their emotions, not by their rational thoughts. They were provocated and they suddenly did this. This is what happened. Now, 
they are striving, they are trying hard. Now here strive means they are trying hard to be objective, try to trace. Now what has happened, they are, try to, they are trying to find out how this particular incident happened. Why did we do this kind of terrible incident? Why did we support for this kind of terrible incident? Now they are trying to find out. This is what the poet says. Now, majority of Sinhalese are now, they are a little bit unhappy. They are not satisfied with their actions. Now they are regretting about their actions. Can you understand? Now they are regretting about their actions and they are trying to find out, okay, why we have done this actually? Why we did this? Now we are ashamed of our actions. Right now, we are trying to find out what actually happened. The match that lit this sacrificial fire. Ah, what is the title of the poem? Big match. I hope you can remember when I was explaining the topic or the title of the poem, I told you two words ambiguity and pun. Ambiguity and pun. I told you that the entire poem is based on that. Now, for the first time in the poem, after the title, Again, the word match is actually included here in this particular stanza. Now, here we have that particular technique called pun, or else we call ambiguity, right? Pun or ambiguity. So, the poet says, people are trying to find the match that lit this sacrificial fire. So, match here refers to several interpretations. Two interpretations can be given. Number one, the wax match, right? The wax match we used to Ignite fire. That idea can be given. The wax match we use in our day-to-day -day life, right, to ignite fire. The wax match we use to ignite fire. That idea can be given. That can be taken as the first example. So using that wax match only, they have actually uh, burnt all these houses. That idea may be also there. On the other hand, we have the uh, match, the cricket big match. Now here, the poetess has described about the wax match. On the other hand, we have fire. Fire has also two different meanings. Number one, the physical fire. We burn everything. That is what we call physical fire. And then we have the fire of hatred in our hearts. So both ideas are actually taken into consideration here. Right? The steps by which we reach this ravage place. Now we are trying to find this particular incident did not happen spontaneously, overnight. We came to this 1983 incident step by step. Now, in the next stanza, the poetess is actually explaining us how we came to this particular place. So, this 1983 communal clash did not happen overnight. It did not happen overnight, right? We came to this particular place little by little, step by step. So, the poetess is actually explaining us these steps as well. So, in this particular stanza, we can clearly understand the poetess has mentioned about the flashback. Right? The people are having actually a flashback. How did we come to this particular place? Even though we have done this with a uh, lot of emotions, we never wanted to do this kind of a damage, this kind of a chaos. But now it had already done. Right? But now people are regretting and they are trying to find, they are trying to find how we came to this particular situation. What are the steps that we followed? So people are in search. They are trying really hard to find out how they came to this particular situation or the cause behind this particular action, right? So now they have become rational. Now, previously they were not rational. They were emotionally driven. That is why they wanted to kill all these Tamils. They were under the impression that any person who lived in Colombo in an urban area who talks in Tamil is a terrorist. Can you understand? The same thing happened to these Muslim students as well. After Saharan's attack, each and every Muslim person, we thought that he is a terrorist. Ah, same thing happened to them as well, right? That is why these innocent people were brutally killed and their property was destroyed. Let's pay our attention to this. Right, okay. Now, what is the meaning of strive? Make great efforts to achieve or obtain something. That is what we call strive. Make sure to write down the words. Ah, important. Very important, right? So, pay your attention for that. Right? And then we have objective of a person or their judgment not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in considering and representing facts. Right? So we were very much, now we were very much actually, uh, now we are thinking about these objectives, judgments, but previously we were not bothered to think about them. Ravage. Ravage means that severely damaged and devastated. 
what is the ravage place now the 1983 incident can be identified as the ravage place right ravage place that is what we call the ravage place okay hurry up and write down please pass me a message if you have finished hurry up Right, okay. I hope that you guys have completed the difficult words. Right, okay. So we will go to the explanation. Right, okay. Uh, Upetmi, can you hear me, Puta? Upetmi, are you there? Am yes, I audible okay. to you? Yes, Upetmi, shall we read? There are some difficult words. I will help you. You can start reading, Puta. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, Puta, we will start. Yes. The poetess deals with the internal truth that people in this country have faced the uh, generations, people who are powerless. Soon after the after they elected these uh, politicians with their uh, thought and election. None of these political politicians are neither reliable nor responsible. responsible for the public. People were influenced by opportunistic politicians toward this racial violence. Innocent people were used as weapons. During these incidents, most Sinhalese were, not, were controlled by their emotions, not emotions, not uh, rational, tr rational tr thoughts. The poetess says they try hard to make great efforts to find out the real reason behind the violence who made them to be like this. So I can't see the last sign. Okay, thank you, Dua. Thank you so much for reading. Okay, right. We will read from the very beginning. The poetess deals with the eternal truth. What do you mean by eternal truth? This truth will not be forgotten by anyone. This is the reality of our country. Sada Tanika Satya. Eternal truth. What is the eternal truth? People in this country have faced for generations. This is what we have faced for generations. People are powerless. People are powerless. 
soon after they elected their politicians with their sovereignty through an election none of these politicians are neither reliable nor responsible for the public dan mokadda me kiyan rataka inna puravasiyanta thamai paramadhipatya bale hewat sovereignty right swadhipatya bale kiyala ekak thiyenne eka ape chanda bale api ne ape chandeng me deshawalaknyanta ape balaya denne pat karanna parliamentu wata dan parliamentu wata giyayen passe mokada wenni soon after they go to the parliament what has happened they are neither reliable no responsible egollo gana vishwasakut ne egollo api gana waga kiyamak gannith ne meka ogollo hamoma dannawa this is this is an eternal truth that has happened to sri lanka meka me lankawe alut deyak nemey ne puta meka api hamoma dannna deya this is something very common to all of us meka ne rate atta etoro eya kiyana kaviye mokadda right people were influenced by opportunistic politicians mokadda puta me opportunistic kiyan avasthavadi deshapalak they take the maximum advantage according to the opportunity opportunistic politicians towards the racial violence innocent people were used as weapon ainsaka minissunga palihak vidiyata paavichchi karana weapon aayudayak vidiyata paavichchi karana during this incident most of the singhalis were controlled by their emotions right singhala janathawa palane karanne egalange mokenda emotions emotions kiyala kiyanne monawada hangim walin thamai palane karanne ne singhala kama ape hamuduruwane bauddai arakai mekai kiyala minissunga palane karana this is the reality whether you like it or not this is the reality right we all have to face this and we have understood that up to some extent that is why we did the aragale i hope you can remember the aragale what happened in the aragale right okay so during this incident most of the singhalis were controlled by their emotions not rational thoughts the poet says that they try hard them me singhala minisu mokada karanne loku utsahayak darana they try hard to make great effort the loku via utsahayak dala hoyenawa apita ai mehema une ai api e minisu ng meru eya den thamai hoyan now we are searching for that right to make great efforts to find out the real reason behind the violence ai api me demal minissunga maruwi why did we do like that who made them to be like this kauda api me vidiyata heda gessuwe kauda api me jatiwade kulawade wage dewal api oluwata dammi who did this ah then therna ne ah right this is what the poetess is actually discussing whose intention is this kaagita me adahas right kauda me jati vaade aramana api da matakai ni puta you guys can remember you are not babies actually even today you can clearly understand what actually these political uh, parties actually did in order to get votes right a ah, singhale arabale mebale right bodubale right you can you can remember these things they are not novel to you you have seen these things right who made them to be like this whose intention is this do they really want to have a battle with tamil we have the next part in the next slide right so now you can understand the idea behind the stanza right now people are trying to find out the real reason though they have behaved kind of an idiotic manner when it comes to this particular situation now they are trying they are able to find out why they behaved like this hurry up and write down please pass me a message
right so if you have finished please pass me a message i need five students to complete this hurry up Right, okay. I hope that you guys have completed. We will move on to the next part. Under whose influence we, uh, did we do this? Who lit this sacrificial fire? Under whose influence uh, did this beautiful country become a hell? The poetess is rising. Sorry, the poetess is raising all these questions from the audience. Here, the fire has two meanings. This is what we call as fun or ambiguity. The fire, anger or hatred in our hearts and the physical fire which destroyed everything. So this is what you have to pay your attention, right? This is what palm means our hands, Puta. The, the, the destruction is actually done from our hands, right? So under whose influence did we do this? Who lit this sacrificial fire? Under whose influence did this beautiful country become a hell? The poetess is raising all these questions from the audience. Here, the fire has two different meanings. This is what we call as pun or ambiguity. So pun or ambiguity refers to one, one, different, one word may have different meanings. Here, one word may have different meanings. So here we have two different meanings to the word fire. We have anger or hatred in our hearts. Because of anger only with our palms, with our hands, we destroyed all these property and people. On the other hand, we have physical fire that is actually the fire that destroyed everything which we used to uh, ignite fire the wax matches we used to ignite that physical fire hurry up and write down please pass me a message it can be taken as a rhetorical question exactly yes it can be taken as a rhetorical question Rhetorical question refers to the poetess is raising the question and he or she is not providing us an answer. As the audience, we have to find out an answer for the incident. She or he is not going to give an answer for whatever the question that she has raised. So we have to find out an answer. That is what we call rhetorical question. The poetess or poet is raising the question, but uh, she is not expecting and she is not providing an answer. So our answers may be varied. According to the person, the answer may be varied. 
Hurry up and write down.
Okay, I have given enough time to write down. I hope you guys have completed, right? We will discuss more about this. Right, so I hope you guys can see the screen. The poetess has become more radical in thought. More radical. Now, that is why she is questioning us, right? She has become more radical in thought and rational in reasoning. So now she is actually reasoning why this particular incident has happened. What is the reason? Now, she is reasoning from us, right? Here, we can understand the word match has been used for the first time after it has been used for the title of the poem. Now, what is the title of the poem? The big match, right? So after the title, here it has been used again for the first time. Now here we can understand the word match has been used for the first time after it has been used for the title of the poem. We discuss how the title of the poem is dealing with ambiguity. What do you mean by ambiguity? Same word may have different interpretations. Here the poetess has compared the racial violence to a wax match. Here the poetess has compared the racial violence to a wax match, which we use to ignite fire. From the wax match called racial violence, a sacrificial fire was ignited. Please highlight and write down now the poetic meaning, the poetic idea. Mitana, Ginipetti akata samana karlati enama me Asutune kalujuli. Asutune kalujuli aki anne ginnak nang. E ginna, e ginna samana karlati enama mokata the sacrifice kila ki anne api yamak mokata the kapa karna. Kapa kiri me ginna. E ginna ta. Sacrificial fire, aka ni kapakiri maki and a ginata, atrama, muna dunia in Sakaminisu. That is what she tries to say here. From that wax match called racial violence, a ginipeti and amatamai racial violence, Natangapiki and ama, jati bede, jati natra gatuma, a jati natra gatuma gin a ginipeti and hatagat the ginderatamai, make kapakiri in gin, sacrificial fire, lot of people, lot of innocent Tamil people, Tamil children. They, sac they sacrifice their lives, right? They sacrifice their lives because they did not do anything wrong. The only thing that they did was actually they were Tamils. That's it. A sacrificial fire was ignited. Innocent Tamils, Muslims, and Sinhalese were victims of this sacrificial fire who lost their lives and property forever. Now, some of them have realized how they have become puppets of these political agendas. Now, some of the Sri Lankans, most of the majority of the Sinhalese have identified, they have become puppets. They have become puppets of these political agendas. This is the reality of the story, right? This is the reality. Now, they have understood. That is why they participated, Aragale, right? Irrespective of Sinhala Muslim burger, they all participated for Aragale. What was the reason? Jati be the Aulo Ladin, me Jati be in Tamayo Jiatin. Eka Terunga Tane, Ah, any Satama Aragale again. That is why they went to the Aragale, right? Ah, same thing happened to here. Now, some of these majority have identified that, okay, now we have we had become actually puppets of these political agendas, right? So now they are actually regretting about their actions. Now they are not happy about their actions. Now they are regretting about their actions. This is what we can understand. Hurry up and write down. Please pass me a message if you have finished.
okay we are moving to the next stanza now now this is little bit difficult to understand uh, now we are discussing about the political history of the country these political years are very much important my dear students so make sure to pay you attention to this one we talk of 48 and 56 of freedom and the treacherous politics right so we discuss about 1948 and 1956 these two years are very much symbolical so you have to know exactly what actually happened in these two years freedom and the treacherous politics right treacherous politics means opportunistic politics politics based on opportunity right pity politics pity politics right treacherous politics of language language based on politics see the first sparks of this hate ah right see the first spark so here spark means again fire i told you in this poem fire has given two different meanings number one the hatred or else the vengeance of people second one is the physical fire so fire has been given two different perspectives here in this particular poem right uh, treacherous politics of language see the first sparks of this hate we saw the first sparks of this hate we saw the first a uh, sparks of this hatred fire call hatred mitana sparks kila kiyanni puta fire fire of hatred right and uh, fan into flame fan into flame means it was boosted fan into flame means it was boosted right it was boosted now what happens when you are providing lot of uh, air to the fire it will be burnt more right so what actually happened in 1956 was actually boosted in 1958 i will explain you one by one why these political years are important and the importance of these years yet even after long period of time right this conjunction is very much important the coordinating conjunction where the poet says yet find no comfort still we have not found still we have not found a comfort still no solution is given to these innocent people still no solution is given to these innocent people no abstraction no absolution absolutely no solution is actually provided to these innocent people right even after long time right even after long time right no proper solution no abstraction right no abstraction was given to them they are human rights they are fundamental rights they are uh, cultural rights they are not actually respected so this is what actually happened in sri lanka still uh we have not found a solution right even after the even after the independence even after the communal clashes even after the cruel brutal war this communal problem right communal problem still remains in sri lanka this is what the poet has highlighted this is what the poet has highlighted this entire stanza discusses about the political history of the country so you have to have a very good understanding about the political history of the country based on these years first and foremost we will pay our attention towards 1948 as you can see here on the screen in 1948 what actually happened ceylon was granted independence as the dominion of ceylon on the 4th of february 1948 so a lot of people think that we gained independence on uh, 4th of february 1948 actually it was half independence what do you mean by half independence even though the independence was actually given to us the country was still actually controlled by the british regime they had the power to control the country some of these powers were actually given to uh, sinhala leaders like ds senanayaka and all but they were also actually working to the british government dominion independence means not the full independence but the half independence unfortunately the public or else the citizens who live in sri lanka they thought that we received full independence but that is not correct in 1948 we did not receive full independence i have explained that here dominion independence refers to half independence most of the powers were still vested in the british regime even though they have given us the controlling power most of the power was still actually vested upon british government british regime dominion status within the british commonwealth was retained for the next 24 years until 1972 make sure to remember puta this history is very much important i am discussing about the history of the country until 1972 sri lanka did not become a republic right so we were not to be dominion right dominion means we were under the regime of british yes we are actually independent but make sure to remember still we were governed by british regime 
after 24 years only we found our republic or else our own government governed by our own government which actually occurred in 1972 after 24 years right in 1972 first constitution was actually introduced to sri lanka then 1978 we have the second constitution right 1972 is the year was the year actually where we gained the republic the name republic right after 1972 only we were uh, we were known as the republic of sri lanka so in 1948 the poetess tries to explain the fact that though they said that we received independence we did not we did not gain the full independence this is what the poetess tries to highlight so hurry up and write down please pass me a message if you have finished
Okay, we discussed about the importance of 1948. Now we are going to discuss about the importance of 1956. In 1956, what actually happened? The Official Language Act, Act number 33 of 1956, commonly referred to as the Single Only Act, was an act passed in the Parliament of Ceylon in 1956. The act replaced English with Sinhala as the sole official language of Ceylon. With the exclusion of Tamil. Now, this, this is what actually happened. In 1956, SWRD Bandar became the president. And he actually introduced an act called Singhala Only Act. Here, what actually happened was Singhala became the national language of Sri Lanka. And uh, others could not communicate with any other language. Singhala became the first uh, language in Sri Lanka. So, as a result of that, Tamils and all the burger communities and other uh, minority uh, communities, they could not communicate because they did not know Singhal. As a result of that, most of the Tamil people thought that, okay, they have neglected, ill-treated, then uh, disrespected us by not letting Tamil as a main language. Even though we are living in Sri Lanka, even though this is our motherland, they are not recognizing Tamil as a language, as, a, as an official language of Sri Lanka. So the exclusion of this Tamil language so as a result of that, what actually happened? A lot of communal problems occurred between them. This is what actually happened in 1956. So SWRD Bandarnaika actually introduced this in order to take the maximum or the majority of votes from the Sinhalese. So most of the Sinhalese thought that, okay, he is a real leader. He is a real patriotic character because he made uh, Sinhala as the national language. But make sure to remember, SWRD Bandarnaika studied in Oxford, right? So he knew how to use English language quite well. And not only SWRD Bandar Naika, his sons and daughters are also very much fluent in English. Now you can understand what is the propaganda behind this. The leader of the country actually used English language quite properly, but the leader of the country did not allow other people to use English as a language. They thought that English is a language which is used by upper classes, not the lower classes. Can you understand? So based on the language, number of problems actually occurred in our country. So the next important year is 1956. Why this particular incident is important? Because SWRD Bandar Naika introduced the Singhala Only Act. As a result of that, all the Tamil people who uh, talked in English, all the Tamil people, all the burger people, all the Christian people who used English as their mother tongue or else Tamil as their mother tongue, they did not have time to, they did not have any chance to use their mother tongue in order to do their communication. As a result of that, number of problems occurred. Right. So you can write down and you can wind up and uh, you can leave the class. The recording will be available tomorrow evening. You can refer to the recording again. We discussed a lot today. We will wind up the session from here. Make sure to write and leave the session. Make sure to join tomorrow's class in order to discuss Vendor of Suites, chapter number 12. Thank you for joining. Have a nice day. Good night.